TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. If you make it to the live, you make it. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, if you do miss a live, this is where to be. The highlights and things of that nature, which I might be switching some stuff around because it really don't make sense for this to be the live channel because none of the live videos go on here. They all go to my main channel, which in turn should be the, the live channel because everything goes there. And this channel should be like another channel like where I do vlogs and things of that nature because I got no strikes. Don't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's clean and clear over here. You feel me? Um, what was I saying though? But that's neither here nor there. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, don't forget we do got the Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. This is a list of everything that's on there. We just posted Only Fools and Horses. Tomorrow is uh, Line of Duty. We already did Top Boy yesterday. And don't forget we do got merch. You get me? The link to all of this is down below, man. In the description. Just click more and then hit uh link tree and then it'll all pop up man i think that I, no this is i think this is gonna be it right here this one because it has no, it's not flagged for, it, oh okay we'll raging on, eclipse salute for the follow man because uh, it, it doesn't have any like n like negativity attached to it so it don't be getting like yellow marked but anyway, campaign will take it away. Season three, episode six, man. I know this is one of y'all favorites. Stop lying to yourself. Let's just get into it, man. Hit the like button. What happens? Where we at today? The pressures faced by tenants trying to find somewhere affordable to live has led to a rise in illicit subletting. A survey of letting agents has found 3.3 million people in the UK are living in illegally sublet rooms. Bowhill and Phil Short are High Court enforcement agents. Who is Phil? They work all over England and Wales, seizing property. Where's um his regular partner at? They need to keep them two together. They need to keep Brian and um. I guess we can keep the new black dude, Brian and the new black dude, on there together. And then we need to keep the the, the straight faced dude. I forgot all their names. And collecting debt. Today, they're heading to East London to carry out an eviction. Is it a woman's name on there? Or Mr. Yes. Miss? The tenant owes £15,000 in rent arrears. How? But how? As a landlord, how do you let it get that bad? If the rent in UK is like 800 like she's been living for free for a year plus. But Paul and Phil are not collecting the debt. They're here to evict the tenant. It's uh, just a straightforward repossession. Just a simple in out, really. Yeah. We'll park here. But it's going to be far from a routine eviction. I'm Paul Bowhill. And this is Phil. That's OK. They met the minister. Who is this? Uh, you're the landlord, are you? OK. Oh, I'm representing the landlord. OK. The letting agent guaranteed the rent and was responsible for paying it directly to the landlord. But this plan backfired when the tenants failed to pay him, and he's now £15,000 out of pocket. So what they're saying is, right, the tenant was supposed to split, get the rent money from the council. Is that what they just said? And they were supposed to pay it to the, and pay it to the landlord instead of the council paying directly to the landlord. Just a bit of advice, I mean, these guys are dangerous. Really? Just for mm. Relations between the letting agent and the tenant have gone sad. Paul, you got to remember, man, I mean, I mean, landlord representation, Paul is a thug. Paul is a gangster. You see how we, these people are dangerous. Paul was, really? Anyway, let's go. <laughs> you feel me? But dangerous behavior is news to Paul. You want to call the police just in case? Nope. <laughs> nope. 
I'm Paul Bohill. <laughs> Paul decides to carry on without police backup. If Talk you to me. Hold back there, say. When we go to a repossession, the only information that we have from the writ is the name of the tenant and the landlord. Hey, I really be you losing subscribers because I be siding with Paul and them sometimes. You got to think about it, man. Some of these people is really getting over. Like I, I like I get it. Like the struggle is a struggle sometimes, but some some people just really be like getting over, and they doing their job. Shoot, and the address. To actually serve the writ, so we have no background oh, information. Oh, letting agents have We don't need it. Well. Our instruction is purely to repossess the property. Hello, I'm from the High Court. We have a repossession order for this property. Are you that lady there? No. Please yes, you are. Me, but I don't know. Does uh, she live here? No. What happened? The landlord has gone to court and has asked for the property back. So, in other words, you have to leave now. Now? You have one hour to get your personal belongings out, and then you can make an arrangement with the landlord to come back and collect the rest. One hour? One hour, yeah. But it's, oh, it's winter outside. I'm sorry, I have no control over that. This shouldn't be a surprise to you because this has been going on for months. Who is this lady? According to this, she's actually the person who rents this property. Are there other people who live here? Yeah. How many other people? I don't know exactly. But we need to change the locks. Now? No. Only one second. Paul hasn't found the tenant listed on the writ, but the woman appears to be living at the property, and she's not alone. Paul, uh, wait, hold on. That's ironic. Paul and Steve have taken their old bosses to court for two hundred thousand pounds of unpayment in their pay. What? If underpayment in their pay? That's tough. They doing? They bogus. They already got a hard job. You know what I'm saying? And today, several other Romanian women are in the house. When I hear Romanian women in a house and they don't know who the tenant is, you know what I think of? Brothel. Brothel. Finish what? Paul makes the most of the open door and steps over the threshold. That's the locksmith too. I'm going to start changing these locks. Now Paul is inside, the property is officially repossessed and the locks can be changed. Who lives in this room? Me. She got the red bulbs in her lights. She got the red lights. You know what time it is, man. Let's not be surprised. The house doesn't seem to be a normal family home. All these seats. This is a waiting room. This is the waiting room, yeah. Fine, so this is a living room. Why would you have a towel hanging there and tissues on there? Red curtains, burning bathrobe, walking out of the geezer fully clothed. Just make sure they're all packing. Phil heads Hello, upstairs. John. Hello. Just two, yeah? Really good. And finds several other occupants in two of the bedrooms. The bedrooms are all set up the same. The residents will be women folk. And then you've got condoms, body lotions, and tissues and so on. Pretty clear signs that this is being run as a brothel. Man, I've been watching this show for too long to not know what I'll be seeing on here. I, hey, listen, a lot of these shows I'll be watching are set police interceptors. I would never. I could go on here and do the job. <laughs> I wouldn't do this job either, but, like, I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking. I'm a happy customer. customer. Yeah. Yo, Why what's up? The curtains, are they your curtains? Yeah. Those covers belong to the landlord. Leave the curtains. Huh? Please leave them there. This is my money. I don't care. Just get out, please. Right, 
you say you're good? Like, get out. Why? He's not been paid any rent to start with. That's the first problem. You've got a nerve on you. Don't, show don't, don't, don't go down. It was only after receiving complaints from the neighbours that the letting... Is this, like, supposed to be, like... Like... Okay. It An was insult? only after receiving complaints from the neighbours that the letting agent found out what the house was being used for. They've been telling me that there's stickers on the lampposts. People are then knocking on wrong doors and whatnot, saying, you know, I'm here for whatever. The letting agent is now threatened with a £20,000 fine from the council if he doesn't close the brothel down. We don't want this happening in the first place, realistically. We just want it a nice family home. The eviction... So y'all was going to be out $35,000 because you're behind 15 in rent and then 20 bands from the... A penny fee from the letting... From the from where? Action appears from wherever. to be going to plan. But the women are in shock. I stay here, in the street, on front of this house. Because I don't have another... Nothing. As the deadline to leave approaches, Paul wants to get everyone out. You stand on the door. It's only out now. No more in. But unknown to the team, the woman on the phone has changed her mind about leaving. No one else goes in there. And she asks the other women to do the same. The mood in the house changes. All right, now, see, y'all could have just left now. I hope every, now I'm gonna be real with you in this situation. I'm hoping everybody paperwork legit to be here because you know when the police come, that trespassing it can be like apply right trespassing. Then you go to jail. Then they might deport you. Just leave. Just leave. You want up right now? You good? Like most brothels when they come shut them down, they know what's up. They leave. Like let's not do this right here. We'll call the police. No, we've got to go out. Right, no more in. Hi, 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 hi. Now Paul and Phil suddenly have a situation on their hands. This eviction could spiral out of control. Call the police. Now, after 10 minutes of deadlock, one of the women appears to be calling her minders. There's always a possibility people who control these girls might turn up. And there could potentially be violence or call the police. certainly aggression. So it's always planned. At this point, you got to go ahead, Paul. Call the police. We know you're not built like that, but you know what I'm saying? You're a nice guy. Call the police. In the back of your mind. Paul isn't taking any risks and calls the police. There you go. We've just executed a high court eviction order here. It's pretty obvious it's been running as a brothel. They're all like getting clever now and refusing to leave. I don't want to put hands on them because of the implications. If somebody stages a sit-in, we will never use physical force until the police are in attendance. They're our responsibility up to the front door and they're the police responsibility if a breach of the peace breaks out afterwards. Some of the women appear less committed to the sit-in than others. The woman who started. Like honestly, what, what like what would you say to the police when they come? Like, yeah, we running this as an illegal brothel, but we don't want to get out because but they but they have the right to put us out because we ain't pay rent in, in however long. Like what I mean, what is the conversation? Started the sit-in also leaves of her own accord. There's only one left in here now. We're gonna just shut the door. But the woman who answered the door is still refusing to budge. 
she maintains that she's been paying rent. And if I understand why it's happened this? The police are coming. I give money from my pocket, and, and now the... I, I stay in the street. You say you've been paying the rent to somebody. They have not been paying it to the landlord. The person you gave the money to is not the owner of this property. She had no right to keep that money. She should have passed it on to the landlord. She's not been doing that. And this is not my fault. I understand that. It doesn't have... That's not the landlord fault either. You gotta go talk to your homie. Affect what we have to do. The landlord has the right to have his property back. The police are on their way here and they will ask you to leave. She's you have my sympathy, but it doesn't alter the way we have to operate. The woman asks the others for advice. <laughs> With their minders not far away. She's sending you on a blank mission. Why you think she's not in the house? She's telling you to stay in the house, but she's not in the house. What type of... You're not taking advice from her, are you really? The women try again to get back into the house. Get the water, please. Oh, half problem, the hard. No? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> no, I want to go to the toilet. It's funny, it's funny. Yeah. Oh. Oh. They appeal to Paul and the letting agent. One day. One hour, please. No. No. Come in my Wait, one second. No. I've not received rent since May. Nobody pays single penny, okay? Now, you're talking about one day. What about me? One year waiting, no money. No, you're leaving come, for free. Sorry, me come on here only two weeks. Oh, I understand that. But the people who you're giving the rent to, you need to speak to these people who give you the house. Effectively, to coin the legal term, they're on their arse in the street uh, fighting to come back in. But if their people, their minders come back, then it will go off. I think it'll be done for the minders to come back. Like, what, like, what are you... The women wait for rescue. Here comes the cavalry. But fortunately, the police turn up before the minders. The occupants suddenly disappear, except for one who still refuses to leave. This is the writ. These people, and it's obviously a brothel running here. Oh, it's a brothel, is it? It was, yeah. Uh, there were six girls working here. There was a customer here who you know, put his head up his arse and disappeared as fast as he possibly could. <laughs> if you just tell this girl out here that we are official, that yeah, the warrant we hold has been signed by a judge, she's got to go. Do you want to speak to me outside? Thank you. You can tell she's super young. Out of the house. Like, I feel you. Like, I, I feel bad a little bit, but, like, at the same time, they running a brothel. Y'all getting finessed. Y'all finessing the people whose business it is because, you know, leasing and renting out apartments is a business at the end of the day. Uh, now, if the council is not paying the rent or taking the May payment, okay, that's different. But this on you, man. You got to know who you're doing, who you renting from, and who you giving your money. You're okay up there now. All done. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Um, probably can stay here. The neighbours are going to be really pleased. Yeah. Good to tell you. Yeah, yeah. they already are. That's what he's holding. He's saying, really? thank you for the imaginations and uh, just hope we get something better on this side. I'm glad we could uh, achieve a result. Thank you very much. After a dramatic standoff, Paul and Phil have successfully completed the eviction. It's been a while since they've if completed you do an eviction. Break into no the property issue. afterwards. That's an offence because you will be arrested for. Okay? Okay. Over the past 12 months, we've attended to three or four evictions which have turned out to be brothels. But the fact that the girls were working girls didn't have any impact on me because quite clearly, None of that's got any consequence to the result. Recent figures estimate that almost 20% of the adult population in the UK is in debt. 
with financial problems rising fastest amongst single parents and under 25 year olds. Bridge End, South Wales. It's been raining in the valleys. It's 7.30 a.m. and High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are here to collect an outstanding debt of over £3,000 from defendant Kathleen Lee. We've been to this one before, Stuart. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Been, we left a letter. Yep. Enforce here goes Stuart and then here goes this dude named Hilarious. Something like Tinkerbell, ain't it? What is his name? Enforcement agents have tried to reach Kathleen three times over the last several months and failed to make contact. It says here no one was in at the good. time of the call. Right. Left notes of attendance. Hence the reason why we're going a bit earlier this morning. Right. Is that his name? The defendant owes the money to an ex-landlord who claims she left his property in disrepair. If Kathleen can't pay, the team have the right to seize goods to cover the debt. There might be a car in the drive because she must be able to get to work and school. So they don't let nobody in there with like a deposit? You don't got to pay a deposit in the UK or something? Cool. <laughs> that, 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 that deposit protect against that, don't it? No, that's a very good point. So what we'll do is we'll drive around the back first. Right, this is what we need to yeah, find Stuart out and Tinkerbell. No, yeah, Vic Victor Tinkerbell. His last name is something wild. But Kathleen's parking bay is empty. Damn. The team drive around to the front of the house, hoping that Kathleen is in. Oh, we have an interior light on. That's always a good start. Try the doorbell. Why the door looks so little? Are they tall? The light may be on, but no one is answering. Guarantee you, up, upstairs. Just go around the back. Stuart finds the back gate unlocked. Hello? Stuart. Is there anyone in? I don't know. Hello, Kathleen! I call enforcement agents. Under the terms of the writ, the team have the right to make peaceful entry into the property. Hello? There doesn't seem to be anyone at home. Hello, Kathleen! I call enforcement agents. I mean, they might have just gone out to the shop or something. I'll come in, Vic. I need to go and do a security check. With no one answering, Stuart is concerned there may be something wrong. Hello, Kathleen. You got the case. Hello. He can hear movement upstairs. Hello. Hello. Then, as he approaches the top floor. I promise you, I can assure you 100% this is not, this could never be a real job in America. Like, they would never send, like, put, put, what's it called? Pedestrians to go do this type of job because, it, especially in Chicago, especially when you got the right to wield firearms and protect your home, like, these people just randomly in your house and you don't really know what's going on. I'm going to blick first and think up, talk about it later. We'll figure it out later. But my instinct is to survive. <laughs> you feel me? Hello? I don't know Kathleen. what's going on. Is that Kathleen? Kathleen, there's no need to worry. You need to understand I'm a, I'm a high court enforcement agent, okay? I'm not, I'm, we're not here to cause any stress. I'm the daughter! Get out! Right, okay. We're not here to cause any harm or anything. We'll just have to... Oh, yeah, you gotta get out, man. You can't even... This is a little kid at this point. Kathleen. Right, okay. Go on, Vic. We're not there to frighten anyone. We're there to do it. Yeah, you gotta get out at that point. Job. What's and good, man? With a child being alone inside the house can make the job a lot trickier. In fact, there are two children alone at home. 
One of them calls Kathleen to tell her that... The yeah, she sounded very scared. Like, I, like, yeah, you gotta get out. There are high court enforcement agents at the house. It's a very tricky situation. We can't go back into the property now that we know there's a minor inside. As she's gone to work further, it might be that we might not be able to do anything further today, but at least we know she lives here. Mm. It's the right property. Well, we can wait. We can wait, yeah. Within 15 minutes, Kathleen... I ain't even gonna lie to you. If Kathleen come home and she's mad, I would have, you would have to accept that as a high court force, enforcement agent. You'd have to be mad and take whatever come with that. Kathleen is back at the house. Yeah. Is, is it Kathleen, is it? Kathleen. What can we do about this, Kathleen? Well, what I'll do is stand back. The main priority now is speaking to your daughter. Kathleen goes inside to check on her children, leaving Stuart and Vic with a potentially valuable asset. Do HPI on the vehicle and see if it's free of finance. If the car isn't Boys, on finance, never stop doing their job. the team Low is entitled back. to seize it to offset the 3,000... I ain't gonna lie, Stuart and Vic, they did the right thing by stepping out like that. ...pound debt. So Vic asks for a check on the vehicle. Can anyone do an HPI for me, please? Case reference is 3214. Thanks, mate. It's on finance. Oh, all right, Andy. You might as well go home. Y'all can't get nothing Cheers, about it here. How long? Two years left on it. Good, that's on finance. Good. So that would have been a bargaining chip. We can exempt that from the list. Main course of action next <laughs> is that we wait 15 minutes, then we'll just enter through the back gate and just knock on the door. Yeah. <sighs> but the plan isn't going to be as straightforward as Stuart and Vic think. Why not? She called the police. Now, after 40 minutes at the property, the team have to explain themselves to the officers. I caught rid of control. There's no issues. That's not because they're disputing anything. No, no, yeah. It's just that, that they, the, one of the girls is very distressed. No, so obviously yeah. she's rung ma'am. We've... And then that's how we... We've, we've stood at the back door. We second we've heard somebody. We've come straight to the back door. Right, yeah. okay. And then we've left it as that. Right, that's fine. That's simple yeah. as that, really. Yeah, yeah, we need to speak to her with regard that. Anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Stuart finally gets the chance. That's tough. Calling the police and then police taking the other people's side is a, like, that's, that's different. That hurt. <laughs> to talk to Kathleen about the debt, he needs to collect payment today. You need to come to some sort of arrangement with regards to this. We have been here four times. You need to try and raise some funds. The, the, the money I've got in my bank, I've got £14. Mm. And I've got, in the post office, £188 something child benefit, which has been hidden today, which yeah. I've withdrawn, and that's it. Can I ask you something? Yes. What can you afford monthly going forward? If you can give us something to work with, we're willing to work with you. Mm. Okay, based on the fact that probably you know that in your experience, if there's one debt, there's more. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe hundred pounds? I don't think that's gonna be accepted. It soon becomes clear to Stuart that Kathleen can't pay the money owed to her previous landlord. Yeah, she down bad. It is worrying that more and more single parents that we see are getting themselves into deeper, deeper debt. But the worst thing is they're not doing anything about it. I be feeling for now this one I feel for, you know, that single parent thing is difficult. And she got two kids. You know what I'm saying? If you if you at the point where you go to work and you leave your children at home by themselves to figure it out while you're at work, then you know it's, it gotta be rough. You gotta be low on some type of money. You know what I'm saying? And this is not like an eviction. This is you owe money from something else, so we come in and collect it. As Kathleen isn't able to pay, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize goods. Take her oven. But due to her circumstances, they offer Kathleen a day's grace to find the money. You'd be amazed about what 24 hours can do. Instead of us 
bit being here and causing you under distress. Yeah, it would be amazing what 24 hours can do, but I've yeah. had weeks to do this and clearly I've not been yeah. able to get any money no. to get there. I have no family to ask. People assume that people have got mum, dad to ask. I've got that. Who am I supposed to ask? It's what is me. it that you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? I'm a social worker. If you're declared bankrupt, your employer would know about it, and I don't know if that would affect your employment or not. Well, here we are. If Kathleen can't pay the full amount when Stuart and Vic return, her ex-landlord could force her into bankruptcy to reclaim the debt. We have informed her that the worst case scenario would be a statutory demand on behalf of our clients. But people need to learn that bankruptcy isn't a joke. It's, it cripples you. I mean, that's why it's there. You have no bank account, you'll have access to no credit, you'll have no funds going into your accounts. It'll ruin your future with regards to applying for any job or anything like that. Mm -hmm. For the time being, the agents are forced to... Bankruptcy doesn't do that in America. Bankruptcy be giving people a second chance here. What, like, it depends on what chapter. Like, I think chapter 7 bankruptcy here, like, it be helping. You know what I'm saying? You can still get bank accounts and things of that nature. Leave empty-handed. Credit start over. We've got bank the account. Resulted. The, the bank, the, the what, is, what is it called? The bankruptcy falls off in X amount of years. I'll just wait it out. That's why, you know what I'm saying? Do not take my advice on what I'm about to say if you were located in America. Turn up while you're young. Go ahead. Get in debt. Then file that bankruptcy. <laughs> while you're still young. Because by the time you hit, what? Let's say you done at 24 being dumb. File that bankruptcy 25. You good by 32. You a brand new human at 32. There you go. She's a single mom with three kids. I don't she couldn't give him the car. Be easy. But Stuart and Vic Finance. will be back in touch with Kathleen in 24 hours to see if she can pay. According to a leading property market survey, commercial rents are expected to rise at the fastest pace since 1998. 46% more respondents forecast higher rent rates going forward. Restaurants and bars have the highest failure rates in all businesses. That's a fact. Everybody think their restaurant is going good, don't, got good food when it really don't. And bars, bars tend to. They t this is what bars cat. Well, this is what happens here at least. A bar is popular here. It gets popular, but the owners think it got popular by something they was doing and not by word of mouth, not by the people. And then they start changing stuff. Oh, no, we don't play that music anymore. Oh, no, you got to dress like this. We can't let you in. And then the bar dies and then they're confused. Like, bro, oh, you made the place uncomfortable. You made it lame. Let the people run the bar to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? As far as music and and like, you know what I'm saying? Dress code. Like, it shouldn't be no dress code at a bar. At a B-A-R? No way. Maybe at a Maybe at a club. I'm be on live for a minute. Hayton, Liverpool. High court enforcement agents. Okay, we with the homies in the pool. Shout out my scousers. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are back on. Elmore. I told you his last name is Victor. His first name is Elmore. Is that not a crazy name? Is that normal? Elmore is equivalent to Tinkerbell in my mind. The road to collect a debt from fast food takeaway owner, Mr. Soren Hassan. Another shop. Gay is 3,039 pounds and 32 pence. He's not selling enough kebabs with sauce. No, he's not, is he? Mr. Hassan has fallen behind with rent payments on his premises. Oh, it's open as well. All right, let's get in that door. Stuart and Vic are looking for full payment today. There you go, Vic, straight in. All right, mate. Uh, yeah, commercial rent is, mate, yes. Yeah, we're after Mr. Soldan Hassan. How much I want to bet Solman Hassan's not there? Soran Hassan is not in. Told you. But the man behind <coughs> the counter quickly gets him on the phone. Is this Soran, is it? Hello, Mr. Hassan. I've been sent by your landlord. Uh, to, collect, to collect an outstanding balance of £3,039.32. Sorry, sir, can you just repeat that? Sorry. 
because I can't hear because of that's all. Hello? Okay, so you need to make a payment, sir. If not, we are instructed to take control of your goods today unless you make me a payment now in full. We're going to stop this now. You've got 30 minutes to make a payment to me in full. <laughs> Stuart. If not, I'm taking control of your goods, sir, by instruction of the clients. Oh, well, there you go, then. You didn't like the sound of that. Mr. Hassan may have put an end to the call, but he rings his assistant. Hanging up on hanging up on a high court enforcement agent where he can shut down your whole business is crazy to me. And back. Stuart thinks he's asked him to buy him some more time. What's he said? Now we have a money. We know just at the moment the bank are in the cash. Account. Yeah. Anything to says for tomorrow morning? No. Okay. The main priority is getting those funds. With the clock ticking, and I gotta know Stuart ain't going, man. He already didn't had his nice deed of the day. The defense he's done. And trying to delay payment, Stuart and Vic apply some pressure. It's no time for the clipboard. If Not Mr. Hassan can't or won't pay the three thousand pounds in rent arrears, the team good, have the man. right to Ooh, take away thousand pounds in rent arrears. The Florida could never do something like this. Never do something like this. I promise you. There's no good food here. None. That's why everybody is in shape in Florida. If you notice, everybody's in shape, got six pack, got flat stomach, got nice toned arm if they're a female, you know what I'm saying? Jaw structure, drawing, you know what I'm saying? Because ain't no good food. They starving here. There's nothing here to eat. I could almost be in a commercial. In the eyes of, like, ain't nothing for me. Send me some. That's why I be eating EUK stuff. The team have the right to good, take yeah. away goods. But first, they need to know exactly what's in. I be out here famished. The shop. It's quite well word? stocked. You've got the kebab skewers. You've got the two deep fat fryers. You've got the prep table there. The fridge full of drinks. The twin freezers. A lot of decent equipment. To be completely honest. I'm not even gonna lie, Stuart. You reaching for the clouds? They only owe three thousand, right? With the inventory done, almost an hour has passed. And there's still no sign of payment from Mr. Hassan. So the agents get the defendant back on the phone. Hello? 10 minutes. Yeah, but are you going to be 10 minutes? Because I've been hearing out 10 minutes for the last half an hour. Stuart isn't falling for any more excuses. Excuse me, mate. Can you start switching all the stuff off now? Yeah. Can you do that now? How much do you want to pay? You, you got to pay me now £3,039.32. Pardon? Cash or card is the same amount. There's no discount. Do you mate? Can you start switching the stuff off now? You're switching your machines off now as we yeah, speak. No payments. So can you start switching the stuff off? Pardon? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right, I'll do it. No, listen. Why don't you pay with the phone <laughs> now? And then we can stop this. Forget all that conversation. Stuff needs to get switched off. So can you do that now? So I'll start doing that now. No, I do no problem. Okay. Go on then. Do you have a card there? Get the chip up machines to it, please, mate. Yeah. Uh, I'll, is it a debit card? The second it starts getting switched off, the debit card comes out. Funny that. But just as Stuart and Vic are about to collect payment, they lose contact with Saran Hassan. He's in a tunnel. Hello? Hello? But then a man walks into the shop. It's Soran, is it? No. I'm a friend of Soran's cousin. Right, OK. The defendant has called on a family friend who's prepared to pay the £3,000. Is there a debit card? Yeah. Well, you got a PIN number there, sir. Yeah, close that door. The family friend has brought back up. So it hasn't been authorised, so maybe... They're trying to jump him? Maybe there was a bit of data protection with regards to it. That's your copy. The payment is declined, but the man offers Stuart and Vic a solution. Pay your cash. Yeah. Cash? Do you want to get a receipt? Yeah. I'll do. I know this dude ain't just walking here with like. First of all, when you can call somebody and they pull up without a problem and pay, car didn't go through. Man, I got cash. Don't even worry about it. Three bands. Something about him that we don't know. Do you want to meet the candidate or what? 
I've got to go to the van. Shot needs to be open. Shot needs to remain open, mate. I've already said that. With so much cash on show, the man and his friends don't want to take any risks. I'm not dictating what's going on, OK? The shutter needs to remain open. Yeah, no, it needs to remain open, mate. I'll come behind the counter and I'll count the cash out, all right? Ain't no way you shut me in here. Uh, leave that open, buddy. You're not from the back door of me. You know, I come, I'm at work. I'm This is my nine to five. I'm not going to die for y'all. Right. I know there's kids and everything outside. I don't want to be counting cash. I understand that. But the money in there, like, can't pay, we'll take it away. No, we'll take your life away. That's crazy. And ignore Stuart. And bring the shutter down. Yeah, it needs to remain open. I've already said to you three times. Bring it up halfway. No, sorry. Yeah, bring it to that. Bring no, it to that. No, I'm sorry, mate. It doesn't no. work like that. I can't yeah, I know, mate, but we're still in here. No, yeah, OK. Can't. You can't. OK, what well, I'll do is I'll no, bring it up halfway. No. No. OK, that's fine. I'll phone the police then. We'll the police. Yeah, I'll do that. No worries. It's like kidnapping. Bring it up halfway, and then I don't have to phone the police. Just bring it up. With the shutters down, Stuart and Vic are concerned for their safety. They need to collect the cash and leave before the situation escalates. That's uh, 3,040, 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's 32. Oh, no, you see one of them giving you one of them, but this one. This That's one. all I've got, You will get a breakdown in the okay. post. Mate, you're wasting my time, honestly. I've been here for over an hour, my friend. Debt collected. Vic is eager to go. Can you open the shutter, please, mate? You can do whatever you want. We've tried to trap you inside the building, make us feel uncomfortable, but we ain't leaving without payment. And walking out with a payment in full is the best feeling in the world. According to research from the UK's leading... Yeah, this is a minute ago, I think. This is like 2000... This was uploaded five months ago, but this is at least from 2014 or something. Association of Landlords, almost a third have... According to research from the UK's leading Association of Landlords, almost a third have experienced rent arrears in the last 12 months. One in five now worry their tenants will struggle with payments in the next year. UK landlords are owed over 800 million in unpaid rent. Dang. Barnes, London. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Phil Short are back on the road to serve an eviction notice on Arnold Mabere and Janine Thiss. It's a standard writ of possession, so an eviction, £8,000 on the writ. We want the next turn and there. Jumping with joy is where the landlady is going to be. For the best part of a year, the defendants have only been making part payments towards the rent. Landlady Christine McLaren is owed over £7,500. I was going to say, at least they try, but like... You ain't trying that hard. You still owe seven bands? If they owe like 700, I. Right. Hello. Hey, how are you, Paul? Oh, I am. Nice to meet you, Paul. Where's the house? It's down here, number 25. Give you that. The drill is this. Mm -hmm. We prefer that you're not there for the first five minutes okay. till we actually get in, and mm -hmm. they'll be given an hour to get packed and out. Mm -hmm. Shit or bust, no quarter given. The team aren't looking to collect the debt. They're here to get the tenants out. See, in America, they send the sheriffs, not the not the state cop. They not the. I mean, I'm sorry, not the local cops. They send the state sheriffs. So if if you if you didn't pay your rent and they went through all the procedures and whatever whatever, they're gonna send the sheriffs. Somebody with police badges and guns and a lot of jurisdiction. So. Ain't even no argument when they come. It's like, all right, <laughs> I'm gone. And with the writ in hand, Paul and Phil have the right to enter the property and change the locks. They are in because they've come and bolted the door.
door. Will you open the door, please? We're not going to go away and we will break in if we have to. It's been a stressful time for landlady Christine. They went in on the 11th of July last year. They bounced the check for the deposit. Since then, I've been shaking and quaking nervously about whether I'm going to be able to survive financially. They know I left London to go and live in Cornwall because I've had cancer and I wanted to de-stress. See, that's what I be saying, man. Like, everybody is living in their own world, worried about their own problems. And I feel like nobody be concerned about the landlord problems. Like a lot, like they, like I'm in Florida, so now like like uh, personal landlords and landlords that are people, they don't really exist here. Big companies own stuff, but like when there's a personal landlord, she got her own financial situation. When you become a landlord, you you're you're basically trying to get residual income so you don't have to work no more, but. When this stuff type going on, like, who's, like, I'm on the landlord side. I'm from a business point. I don't, hey, I got cancer is what she should say. Like, what, what are we, what, what's she supposed to do? No one is answering the door, but then Christine receives a phone call. Oh, it's him. Hello, Arnold. Hi, are you at home? We need to get in. I don't need to arrange it. It's the High Court enforcement that are here. You're leaving today. Yes, you are, darling. And let me put you on to the man because I'm going to get upset speaking to you. <coughs> Thank you. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm a High Court enforcement agent. I'm standing outside the door with a High Court writ to repossess this property. The writ authorises me to break in if I need to. And I will, if you don't open the door. I ain't never seen them the break in. says he's not at home. <clears throat> yeah. How old are the children? Your children, if they're that age, should not be left in the house on their own. I shall ring social services to take care of the children. I'm not going to be kept <laughs> waiting. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I don't think I don't believe dude on the phone anyway, so he gonna pull every card he can right now. No, it's no long. I'm gonna do it now. Thank you. Concerned about the children's safety, Paul wants to take immediate possession of the property. Paul, apparently I can get in from the back. The agents split up. Paul, apparently I can get in from the back. That's what she said. Maybe possibly a pause situation when I just said that. The agents split up. There's a seven foot door in the way. With children home alone, this eviction has taken Scale the an wall. unexpected turn. Judicious use of the crowbars. Paul and Phil will have to act quickly. I'm looking for children. But who's, whose money is going to repair the door, though? Now, Paul is on a mission to find the young occupants. There's no kids there. Can it's you a, open this door? It's a hoarder? You said the children were in here. Obviously not. Mr. Mabere clearly hasn't been telling Paul the truth. Yeah, we knew that was a lie. And he's back on the phone to Christine. So you said he just rang again? Yeah. Um, Asking if his children were okay. The children not in there? They're not in there. No, they never were. Maybe they're hidden. Nine months after putting her home up for rent, Christine walks back into her property. They're a bit shaky, actually. <laughs> And it was a brand new kitchen when they came in, and that is disgusting. I had a really nice home before, and this is despicable, and it smells. I've got to turn this round really quickly, because they owe me so much money. Oh my gosh. 
I never understand how people can live like with this so this much clutter and this much non-organization. Like this would give me like I don't even get anxiety, but this would give me anxiety. Like I could, on a daily basis living like this though. Like who who? I'm at work nine hours. Who I can't wait to go home to clutter. Never. Yeah. Then it's uh, it's dreadful. I haven't been able to work because of ill health, and this was my only source of income. Very nearly. Right. Crib looked like a bando. It looked like K Trap and Hetty won't work up out of there. You know what I'm saying? That's and, tough. And they've not paid a complete month. Looked like the best lyrics in South London have came out of there. That's that's crazy. Months rent in all of that time. Paul and Phil have been at the property for an hour and there's still no sign of the tenant. I don't like to leave without seeing the person that we've just evicted. I like to complete the loop, make sure he's got a copy of the rent. So Paul gives Mr. Mabere one last chance to attend the eviction. Hello? Yep, yeah. okay, so we've repossessed the property. Your children are not inside and never were. And so if you want this a copy of this writ, you must come here quite quickly because I have other work to do. OK, I'll go my way. How long will you be? Uh, 25 minutes. Thank you very much. Bye. With the tenant's arrival imminent, Paul advises Christine to keep a low profile. Half an hour later, Mr. Mabere finally arrives at the house. OK. Yes, sir. It's always a relief if the tenant turns up yes. because we can explain to them very forcefully what the effects of the writ are and there are no loose ends left for the landlord to try and explain. The defendant immediately questions the legality of the High Court writ and produces a letter from the county court. Every time, I, every time there's somebody with a messy house, they want to question the legality of something. I'm going to take that to them and they'll come see They won't. Well, that's what they said anyway. But it's fine, don't worry. They will sort it out. Because they say this is an illegal thing. Give it to me, I'll take it back to them. Of course, by all means. Thank you very much. <laughs> he is so confident. That leather jacket make him confident, huh? I would say 70 to 80% are where the tenants are not necessarily taking the piss. That's probably a bit strong. But they've taken advantage of circumstances and they're just stretching it out. That's crazy. To breaking point. I'm not going to be... So that's crazy. Hold on, y'all. I got something for him. I just don't believe... I feel like I'd be bogus if I didn't do this for bro. for you. This how you use it. But on your hair, on the top of your scalp, you just pick it out. You just pick it out. You just pick it out. That's all. Not too difficult. You know what I'm saying? It's really easy when you think about it. Not too difficult helpful to you unless you change your attitude okay that's fine you, do i suggest you go to the court and turn it all upside down no, no, and then i'll fine. see you back here on tuesday no, that's fine. I just need to yeah. give you emergency things no, no, and then i'll fine. see you back here on tuesday no, that's fine. I just need to give you emergency things. faced with paul's ultimatum mr mabere goes inside to collect a few essentials did you go in phil yes so close he can collect all his belongings in a few days' time. So you don't miss anything. Identification, medication, clothes, and some toiletries. But the tenant's frustration no over the eviction begins to show. There's a dispute as to who has possession of this property. Sir, there's no dispute, OK? Sir. Yeah? Do not point at me like that. Calm down. Yeah? Do not right. point at me like that. Please and calm do not, down. Do not adopt an attitude with me either. I'm not the attitude yeah? you. I'm calm. 
Just calm down. Just carry on talking. I'm not condescending. You are. You need to do with racism. You want to see a black person? This is exactly what. So this has got nothing to do with racism. I don't know. How, that's that is an outrageous anyone claim. Your, I've never seen anyone speak to a white person in the way you're speaking to me. I've never. I think people are stressed in circumstances. Okay, on behalf of the black community, he is not speaking to you no kind of way. I don't even this is know. like an eviction. All they're looking for is a weapon to throw back at us, be it a tirade, a choice of words, racism, whatever insults they can throw back, they do. And we just let it ride because after a few minutes, it'll go away and we'll just get down to the job in hand. A quarter of an hour later, and the tenant seems to be in no hurry to leave. A quarter of an hour later. Just say 15 minutes later. Like, hey. Is there anything else you need to grab from the house, sir? We've been here too long now. Mr. Mabere ignores Phil and locks himself in the downstairs bathroom. It's taking a long time. It's all right, my patience will run out, surely. Quick little number two. Down there. So, so, what are you doing in there? Sounds like you're counting money. Sounds like you're counting money. Okay. <laughs> so he got the bread. He playing games. Counting money in the bathroom. Lot. Yeah. He hasn't paid the rent for what seven months. He's in the bathroom counting money. It makes you sick, but you see it every day and you kind of get... Yeah, don't feel bad for him no more. I felt a little bad, but like now it's over with, man. You went to the bathroom, right in front of them to count the money? Like, that's crazy. Desensitized to it. And, well. If I was a landlord, just for that alone, I would bankrupt him. I ain't even gonna lie to you. You yeah, start the bankruptcy process. And if you get in the comment section and you get to, oh, I can't believe you're taking these guys' side... I'm taking the landlord side. <laughs> you hear me? There you go. It's been over two hours since the agents arrived at the property, and Paul has had enough. We're gonna be out now inside. He came out the bathroom looking like the equalizer. <laughs> ah, he looked like Denzel in the equalizer. Oh, man. It's been over two hours since the agents arrived at the property, and Paul has had enough. Are you going to be out now in five minutes, please? I'll perhaps rephrase that. You've got five minutes to leave. I just want to make sure I've got all my people. No, no, that's OK. But instead of leaving, the tenant heads back upstairs. If he doesn't go in the next five minutes, I'll physically eject him. But he's just been truculent, isn't he? Right. You need to leave now, sir. You've had more than enough time. I mean, once you're dressed, sir, you're gonna have to go. Oh, went upstairs to change clothes? Bag's already outside waiting. After three quarters of an hour at the property, Need a Mr. hug Mabella shirt is crazy. leaves. Just ignore it. The important thing is you've got your property back now and you can relax. It's your house. Mm, it's the um, end of a chapter, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. What happened to the kids? <laughs> Kathleen, we knew Kathleen wasn't doing it. He got money, he should. $11,000 refurbishing her property? That's crazy. All right, man. To y'all, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone. Hit that like button. Let's stop acting like we don't like this show, man.